Okay, we're going to take a look at the null object design pattern today. It's one of the simplest ones to start with. It's quite useful in cleaning up a lot of code. It also deals with a lot of old habits. Not necessarily bad habits, just old habits that uh, I, myself, as well as a lot of programmers have. And we're going to start off, we have a really simple class structure here. We have an abstract base class, car, and we have two subclasses of it, uh, descendant classes, fast car and slow car. Nothing very special here, as you can see. We also have a car factory object that we're going to use to create instances of the car to make sure things a little simpler. It takes one; per it has one method, get car, takes one parameter, maximum speed. If that's less than 70, we're dealing with a slow car. If it's less than 120, we want a fast car. Otherwise, we're returning null. And that's one of the habits that we're talking about and one of the things that we're going to try and remedy with the null object. We have this class over here called car processor, which is my attempt at an original name and poorly managed at that. It has one method, drive car, that takes max speed desired as a parameter which is going to get passed into our car factory when we create the instance here. Now, as you can tell pretty simply off of this instance, if this parameter here, max speed desire, which gets passed into the get car method, is greater than 120, greater than or equal to 120, then we're going to get null. So we need to do some kind of checking here. And we're going to check to make sure that we have a valid object to work with. Because if we start playing with it, we're going to get null reference exceptions, and those aren't very good. So we'll just throw in a simple little while loop here. speed up while we're not at the maximum speed desired and this is fine this works if we have a car then we're going to speed it up until we get to the maximum speed desired if we don't have a car then we don't do anything now of course there's other ways you can do this too there's I mean you can go the opposite way here if car is null for whatever reason. We'll just skip it. We don't do anything. If we can also throw an exception here. That's another way we can handle it problem with that is now whoever's going to be calling this needs to worry about catching an exception. Sometimes that's fine, sometimes it's not. And we can also, if we wanted to, we can add a similar check here, like these max speed less than 120, and put that up here. And make sure that from this point forward, we're never going to get that null car. That this is always going to return something that we can work with. But you know what happens later on? This oh well, our max speed for a fast car just went up. It's going to be 150. I mean, then we have to come over here and change this. So that's not very good either. So well, going back to this, in its original form. We want to get rid of this. In this particular instance, this may be a bad example because it's one if block. But over the course of time, we may have 30 other methods that have this exact same if block that we have to handle. So we're going to try and work around that here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new descendant of car. And again, 
for lack of originality, we're going to just call this one Null Car. And we'll use Microsoft's IntelliSense to fill in the blanks for us. And because these just return void, like that, we don't have to do anything. This null car is just null. It does absolutely nothing. And we can go back in here to our factory and just return a new instance of the null car object whenever our max speed has been broken. And so now, since this method right here is never going to return null, we can get rid of this point right there. And now we have our while block. Very simple, easy to follow method. Lock cleaner. Now we can stop right there. And that's perfectly fine. But there's one minor problem here. In our factory method, as you can see, we're always returning a new instance of the same old null car, which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you may be dealing with an object that takes up a lot of memory, or this may get called quite often, and so you're going to have hundreds or thousands of instances of this null car object just floating around doing nothing. So we don't really want that since there's no point to having an instance of it. We're going to revert to our old friend, the singleton, for this. And we're going to have a single instance of our null, call, null car object. going to use that in our car factory. So now, not only do we never have to worry about dealing with a actual null value, we have our nice clean code here that's always going to work, or rather it's not going to crash on us, but we're also not taking up tons of memory. Why? having new instances of it thrown about all over the place. And as you can see, our original code over here is cleaner. In this example, it's not much cleaner, but it's cleaner. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense, and hopefully you'll be able to find a chance to use that in some of your projects.